Hey everybody, it's Travis speaking. If you've been following along, uh, in the last video we took a look at how we could create a built-up fascia using uh, a profile family in Autodesk Revit. So today what we're going to take a look at is how we can uh, use the extensions to create some rafter framing. So you can see from the last video here I've got uh, my fascia board and we can kind of see that there's a little notch in there. Uh, if you can't, let's just switch quickly over to a section and we can take a look at that a little bit better. Alright, so I've got this roof structure in here that's, um, it's basically just the cladding, um, just a standing seam roof with some sheathing on it. So uh, let's take a look and see how that will work for us if we use our extensions. So I'm just going to go back to a 3D view here so we can see this. And I'm going to switch over to the extensions. And basically what the extensions are, are there some additional tools that come with your subscription. So if your subscription is active uh, and you open up the uh, Autodesk Application Manager, which is down in the lower right hand corner of your screen, uh, you'll see this little blue A sometimes with a little red star. Basically that means you have some updates coming to you. Um, and the extensions can come in through there because it recognizes it through your serial number. So let's take a look. There's quite a few tools in here. You've got steel connections, reinforcement for rebar. Uh, there's some analysis tools as well. And then under this one right here, you can see that there's some really good stuff like a frame generator, a grids generator. This is for levels and grids. It makes it real easy to put together something um, depending on how simple it is. Like if it's just a straight grid, then you can get a good start with this. Um, but let's take a look at the rafter framing. We're going to use this one here. So when I when I click on it without having anything selected, it says no roof was selected. So let's grab the roof here first and we'll go back to that extensions tab and click on the rafter framing. So what this will do is open up a little uh, dialog box and what this allows us to do is create some structural framing directly through this uh, so this is kind of like a precursor to Dynamo. If anybody, any of you have checked out Dynamo, you'll know that there's this new computational design craze going on. Um, but that's essentially what this is. It's just going into the API and creating these members using this little wizard here. So you'll see that there's four categories. So we've got the rafters and you can see that it's naming each one of these. And if we switch over, we can kind of uh, move around inside of this to just see how, how these things are going to get framed out. So the first thing I want to do is just make sure I get something that matches up with my um, with the, the fascia and what I've already got kind of set up. I do want um, five and a half inches for the depth so that's okay if I switch back to this side I see that I've got five and a half inches for depth as well and this is saying for thickness one and one over one, but I actually want one and a half. Okay, so uh, you can take a look at the tail type as well. There's three different types. And so we'll just stick with this standard one that's coming in here. And let's see here. If I go to ridges, this is going to give me uh, the same sort of thing, basically different types of ridges. So I'm going to stick with uh, ridge, I'm going to go to ridge board. And the thickness, let's see here, we've got W, so that's saying four. I'm just going to make that, that's going to be an inch and a half as well. And the depth, I'm going to make the depth on this um, seven and a half. And not tight, we'll leave that as is. Okay, so collars, I'm just going to leave that collar in there as default and the purlins, we don't really need purlins, so I'm not too worried about this. Um, so now um, I'll hit OK and we'll see what happens. I get a little bit of a, a status bar there that goes pretty quick and you can see it's added in all these framing members. So you can see how it's kind of intersecting with the wall right now. And if we go back to the section, we'll see that these are pretty much flush with the top of our, our roof. So I'm going to go back to that section and just take a look at the construction on this. So we can see that the actual rafter itself, this can come down a little bit. So we could change the start and end level offsets. 
Um, or we could adjust our roof. Um, you have, you've got basically a couple different ways of doing this. So I'm going to try it this way. I want this member to sit directly underneath the sheathing. So I'm going to try a tool called select all instances. So because these are all basically the same thing, if I say select all instances in entire project, I should get all of them for this roof structure. So it says that I have 23 here. And so now I'm going to use my move tool and I'm going to go up to the top and then just bring that down just a little bit. I'm going to ignore that warning for the time being. And now I can see that when I select the member, it's directly under that sheathing. Okay, so if I go back to the 3D view, we don't see it coming straight through. We can kind of get an idea if we rotate around where those rafters are, but now let's see the fun part. If I select the roof and right click and say hide in view, we can see where all those rafters sit. Um, relative to some of our exterior cladding here so we know now that we can go back to these uh, batten strips which are in a group so if I say edit group I should be able to select that and then just bring that to the top of that ridge so if I say finish the rest of those should update I might have a couple rogue rogue batten strips, yeah, like here over where these guys are, so I just modify those as well. That goes pretty quick. Okay, so now we've got a good start with our, our framing here, and you can see where I've put in that rough fascia before. Um, we've got the uh, we've got the fascia right on top of that last board. So right now, this looks a little bit different. If I select this and say edit type, don't see material in here so it's oh I see so it's an instance parameter so again um, just selecting this go to all instances an entire project and it gives me all these guys so I'll just change this to softwood lumber and you'd have to do that with your ridge too so once you get that all changed it should have kind of the same same sort of look and then you'll get a good idea as to what kind of framing you need to do. So what's nice about this too is if we switch this over to, let's see, like um, top plate, you'll start to see these members in here. Uh, right now they're below the roof, so we're not really seeing them. Um, but we can adjust these view settings to take a look at uh, the structural framing or create a separate view for that uh, if we wanted to. And so I really strongly advise checking out some of these tools. Like if you look at, um, there's a, a roof trusses and a roof framing. Um, oftentimes I hear people asking for a way to frame out their cavity walls, but there's actually a tool right in there. So you don't have to create any uh, line based components okay so it's saying I need a wall so let's just take a look at that quick Okay, so something up with that other wall, as you can see, but this one here um, doesn't have any problems. It seems okay with us using it. So we're getting uh, an idea as to what we're looking at here. So this is actually pretty neat too, because you can go in here and see the walls that you're, you're dealing with. 
And this, like I said, might have just been something to do with that wall. So anyway, uh, now that uh, I've got that zoomed out a little bit, I can rotate around this the same way uh, as you would inside the model space so we get an idea as to what's going on with this wall, with the type of framing that we're setting up. So geometry, let's take a look at this. You got layers and properties, um, the different walls in here, uh, studs and blocking, external framing. This stuff is all pretty, you know, pretty concise. You've got a lot of your openings and all that is it's built in functionality. So if you take some time and you take a look at these, you might find that this is a, this is something that could accelerate your productivity quite a bit. So I just wanted to show you a couple of those tools. You could spend quite a bit of time exploring it. So just wanted to point that out for a few of you that are following along. Um, and if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment box and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks for watching. Bye now.